Smoky, sweet, and strong. This maple wine has loads of complex aromas and flavors, followed by a punch of alcohol. The recipe may be inspired by mead, but today we're using 100% maple syrup to make this delicious fermented beverage. I'm Trent Musho, and this is The Brew Show. Let's make a maple wine. As spring comes around, the maple trees start to flow with liquid gold. The sweet syrup from the maple tree is an amazing alternative to sugar, and goes great not only on pancakes, but in fermented drinks. When I made my maple brown ale, it really added a nice smokiness, but the overall flavor of the maple kind of faded away as it fermented out. But it got my wheels turning, and I started to think about predominantly maple syrup ferments. Acer Glen is a maple mead made with a portion of honey being substituted for maple syrup. It sounds amazing. However, being vegan, I don't make meats, so the next logical option was to do a maple wine. A maple wine meant I would use 100% of maple syrup as the sugar source, and I could treat it like a mead and use some of the same practices to make an Acer Glen-ish drink. Not having much experience with mead, I thought having some sort of kit would be helpful because it gives you everything you need to get started. The kind people over at Homebrew Ohio were nice enough to send me a mead kit to try out. This kit has all you need to get going, the fermenter, a hydrometer, a mini auto siphon, yeast, and all the nutrients needed. All you need to do is bring the honey, or in this case, maple syrup. And the great part is, this is the perfect starter brewing kit if you're new to the hobby. You can reuse the tools and some ingredients to make all kinds of great fermentations after this. The two gallon fermenter would be great for small batches of beer, simple hard ciders, wines, or even kombucha. I'll have the kit linked in the description below. Maple syrup prices can be a bit high, so try and catch them while they're on sale. You can always head over to Costco, like I did, and buy it in a bigger size, which will save you a few bucks. So with the mead kit and the maple syrup, it's time to bring it all together. I'm going to be making a one and a half gallon batch, but this can definitely be scaled up or down to your preference. To start, I add in one gallon of distilled water. I'm using distilled to have the cleanest starting point. To that, I add in my maple syrup. I'm adding in five pounds here. It's thick, so take your time pouring it to get as much as you can and then stir it up and mix it into the water. If you're enjoying this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up so I know you're interested in fermentations like this. And if you haven't, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any other great brewing videos. Once it's fully mixed in, I take an original gravity reading and get 1.100, which is strong. This will definitely end up above 10% ABV. Now it's time to take a look at all the additional nutrients and additives in the meat kit. First up are a set of acids. 3 teaspoons of malic acid and 1.5 and teaspoons of tartaric acid. These acids are often sold in an acid blend as well. They help lower the pH of the wine to protect from bacteria spoilage, but also add a zip and crispness to the finished wine. Next up is a fourth teaspoon of tannin. Tannins are found in fruit skins and they often add to the mouthfeel and body of the drink. Fresh maple syrup will also have some tannins as it comes from a tree, so I'm just adding a little bit here. If you've ever made a wine that has a very light, watery mouthfeel, Adding a touch of tannin can help give it some backbone. Lastly, a teaspoon of yeast energizer, which is a blend of yeast nutrients to help support the yeast health. DAP or dionium phosphate or some Fermate O would be a good replacement if you have some from your other brews. Nutrients are definitely needed here because the maple syrup itself has very little nutrients to help the yeast do their job and to not throw off flavors. Once those are all in, I give it a good stir with a sanitized spoon to mix them in. Then it's time for yeast. This kit included one package of Red Star Premier Blanc yeast. This is a great versatile wine yeast strain that can tolerate higher levels of alcohol and makes for great juice fermentations. Once the yeast is in, I give the fermenter a good shake for 60 seconds to incorporate oxygen. I then pop an airlock on and set it in a cool dark place for about two weeks of fermentation. Within a few days, fermentation activity was kicking off. And after two weeks, I noticed the airlock activity had slowed down, so I take a final gravity reading and get a reading of 0.996. That means this maple wine comes in at 14% ABV. We officially have wine. So I decided to take a taste and it was strong and dry. The dryness really accentuates the alcohol flavor and it came off a bit harsh. So I decided to back sweeten this to smooth out some of that. Before adding in more sugars to sweeten it, we need to stabilize the wine which means that we need to stop the wine from continuing to ferment when the new syrup is added. The simplest way to do this is to use potassium sorbate and potassium metabisulfite, also known as Camden tablets. These two work to stop the yeast from reproducing. Note that they won't stop an active fermentation, but they will keep the yeast from kicking back into action. 
so be sure you're at final gravity before moving on. I'm going to be adding in one teaspoon of potassium sorbate and two Camden tablets split into two carboys that I will then rack the maple wine into. I didn't have a larger carboy so that's why I'm splitting it up here. I quickly heated up a bit of water in the microwave to sterilize it before adding in the stabilizers to dissolve them. I then just split them into the carboys. Then I just use the auto siphon to transfer in. The reason I'm racking off into carboys is to get the wine off the current yeast cake to minimize the total amount of yeast and hopefully get the clearest wine in the end. Once they're filled up, I let those sit for at least 24 hours to allow the stabilizer powers to kick in. After 24 hours, it's time to back sweeten. It can be hard to know how much sugar, or in this case maple syrup, to add in to get the right sweetness. Not too much and not too little. So I did a quick dosing experiment. I took a few 50 milliliter samples of the wine and then dosed them at different levels with the maple syrup until I got an amount that was Goldilocks, right in the middle of dry and sweet. This part is totally to your preference, so you can set this however you want. Or if you like it dry, you don't have to do any of this. So I split that into two 80 milliliter samples of maple syrup and poured it into each of the carboys. Then I gave them a light stir to mix it in and softly degas the wine. Degassing is not required, but it's helpful for still wines where you don't want any CO2 stuck in suspension. Racking and stirring are always a good way to do this, but don't get too crazy and start shaking the carboy as you can still risk oxidation off flavors. Although the Camden tablet has anti-oxidizing properties, so we should be safe here. Once it's mixed in, you can start bottling. I had some other things going on, so I just let this sit for another day before moving to bottling. Bottling wine takes a few special things. First, the bottles themselves, but you can just save old wine bottles and reuse them as long as they're clean and sanitized. Then you need corks. I will link to my favorite corks in the description. They're kind of like having bottle caps. You won't use them all in one sitting, so you have a good stockpile for future wines. And lastly, you'll need a wine corker. There are standing wine corkers that are great to have on hand, but I've had this hand corker for years and it gets the job done just great. All you need to do is load the corks in the slot and pump the arms down to push the cork into the bottle. It helps to soak the corks beforehand too. I usually put them in a bowl of star sand solution. Outside of that, bottling is pretty straightforward. Pop in your sanitized auto siphon and tubing and pump until you get that liquid moving. Using a bottling wand helps prevent spills. It has a spring activated valve that when you push down in the bottom of the bottle, it lets wine through, and when you release, it stops. So with that, I just fill up all the bottles. By the way, this bottle calculator is super helpful to use. You put in the amount of liquid you're bottling, and you start entering types and numbers of bottles until you reach the right amount of bottles needed. I always add a few more just to be safe. Once the bottles are filled up, I cork them, then I add some snazzy details to really make these bottles shine. These personalized touches also make this a great gift. And once they're bottled, I set them somewhere in a cool dark place to store until I'm officially ready to pop one open and take a drink. The color on this maple wine is a gorgeous gold. The maple really lightened up with fermentation. And although this particular bottle is a bit cloudy, I can see that the other bottles are clearing up nicely. I'm sure with time, they'll all look beautifully clear. But if you want it, you can always leave the wine in the secondary fermenter to clear out before bottling for better results. On the aroma, I get a lot of complexity. There are notes of wood or oak and a slight smokiness. Based on the way this looks and smells, I think it was a whiskey. But once you take a sip, you're hit with that sweet maple flavor, followed by the woodiness and smokiness that's topped off with a slight burn from the alcohol. At 14%, this is definitely more of a sipper compared to some of my other brews. But it's so warming and delicious, and as the bottle sits, those whiskey notes really come to life. But they're well balanced by the sweetness that I achieved in back sweetening. The tannins add a fuller mouthfeel and give this a bit more body than I get from my other wines. I'm definitely gonna have to be using that more, which is great because I have a lot left over from my mead kit. It's pretty amazing how many complex flavors I'm getting from something that is essentially one ingredient. I could totally see this being a great bonfire wine to sip on while making s'mores, or as a nice nightcap that doesn't completely knock me out. And I know with time, this maple wine is only going to get better and have a more rounder, smoother finish. This maple wine has me extremely excited. I used a few new ingredients, and although I can't technically call this an Acer Glen, it's probably as close as I can get to a veganized mead. In the end, I'm very happy with the results, and I can't wait to see how it ages. I'll be sure to post updates in the Discord server, so be sure to join in to see the progress. And if you make this maple wine or something inspired by it, be sure to send me some pics on Instagram, at The Brew Show. 
This week's shout out goes to Alvarado Bruco on Instagram for his American light lager inspired by my video. Tom, this looks and sounds delicious. I love how you switched up the yeast and made it your own. Keep it up. I hope you enjoyed this video and found some inspiration for your next brew. Happy brewing and cheers.